Hello, Loveland. Uh, I'm here this morning. I'm David Miller. I'm here this morning with Jane Gonzalez and Patty Lawrence and Loveland area residents. Uh, Jane lives right here in Loveland. Patty lives a couple feet from Loveland. Yes. So it's uh, they're Loveland residents. And uh, what I want them to tell you about what they've been up to lately. And the subject is uh, women's health, uh, reproductive rights and then issue one is going to be on the ballot in uh, August and then the reproductive rights amendment will be on the ballot in November if the 700 and some thousand signatures that you help collect are all verified and you've got enough. Yes. So uh, let's start at the beginning. What was the current law before the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade and sent the, the abortion decisions back to the, at the state level. So what was it before, a little, just a couple of days, more than a year ago, what were abortion rights in the United States? The Supreme Court said that, and this was a 72 uh, decision, that um, abortion would be legal up until viability. And way back in 1973, they thought that was at 28 weeks. So that was the standard for a while. And then when science improved and they started doing ultrasounds and, and doctors weighed in, the viability, which was the part that was in the law, got moved back to 23 or 24 weeks. So that was the standard um, for the U.S. So then, so then uh, the Supreme Court, which the majority ruled, and, and I think all of the majority at one time promised that they would never do this, overturn Roe Ro v. Wade, but they did. Uh, so things got sent back to Ohio. And Ohio could then pass, and other states could pass their own laws about abortion. So what, what is the law that Ohio passed? Gene Schmidt, our very own representative for the the Claremont side of Loveland um, was the writer and instigator of the current law. It was ready to go um, as soon as Roe was overturned and it was a six-week abortion ban um, well before most women know they're even pregnant and there was also no exception for rape or incest. So um, as the very famous case, the 10-year-old who was, you know, raped by her mother's boyfriend um, this spring had to go to Indiana to get an abortion um, because of that law. Then um, it was appealed, of course, and the uh, Court of Appeals in Cincinnati, in Hamilton County, um, held that law and said that it's, it's not legal. So currently, we're, we're back at, at uh, the, the old law, 20, 20 weeks. But in that decision in Cincinnati that just put the law on hold, it didn't decide it yet, that it's unconstitutional. Correct, and it, it's under just, appeal again. So it's just yeah. gonna you know, get bumped, bumped up to the Supreme Court and when they hear that case, uh, because of the new justices, I think everyone assumes it's going to be overturned. So, and like I say, we're, we're, we're kind of going backwards through this because I wanted to take the history forward. But so then uh, people in Ohio wrote a constitutional amendment uh, with the intention of putting it on the ballot in November about reproductive rights. Could, so can you talk about that and, and how you guys got yeah. involved in it? And, and yeah. what yeah, it will yeah. do if it's if it's yeah. passed. So uh, Physicians for Reproductive Freedom got together. It's a group. It, it initially was a group of about two thousand physicians. Got together and uh, drafted language to amend our constitution. And they did that because they deal with this every single day, and they were really stuck in their careers about you know what to do with a woman who didn't have a viable pregnancy but was going to be forced to carry it to term or you know people wanting an abortion every every day and and now you know the the stats are about one in four women so they confront this every single day so the language was drafted 
It's very tight. It's very clear. It allows a woman the right to choose, a uh, right to contraception, to save a woman's life in an emergency, and um, in vitro fertilization treatment. So really tight, compact language um, that really puts personal decisions back on women and families and their doctors and keeps the politicians out of it, which is you know, the way it should be. Um, there's nothing in there about consent. There's nothing in there about trans. You know, there's, the other side kind of came in with a, a lot of misinformation or deliberate disinformation, but it's really about 200 words, a very tightly worded amendment. So the language was written, the petitions were printed, and you both were involved in circulating petitions yes. around Loveland. Yes. So what was that like? <laughs> what kind of reception did you get here? But I say a uh, majority of people were extremely very supportive. Um, people that you would not necessarily think would be signing said, uh, they've raised their hands, said, I'll yeah. be happy to. Um, I, I, I think most people, just like most of the polls say, I think majority of people think there should be at least some say between a doctor and her, uh, uh, the woman and a doctor for her uh, own physical health and, and um, wealth. So there were... I would say, yeah, I, well, first of all, I would agree. And I would agree, um, and it doesn't mean everybody, um, you know, people who wouldn't ever personally choose to have an abortion were signing because they just feel like it's a, it's a personal choice. And one person I talked to who's very conservative just said... Um, I don't believe women should have laws on their bodies, you know, and I, I think that's very true. Women should not have laws on their bodies. There were, were probably other registered voters that just like to have a choice yes. at the ballot box. Right. right. They right. just want to uh, vote, be able to vote. And maybe not even sure right. how they would yeah. will vote, end up voting, but they like choices. Right. So mm -hmm. we would occasionally get the negative comments. Most people were very polite and they would simply yeah. say, no, thank they you. They just say, no, thank you. Yeah. That, I mean, and, and we just moved on. I mean, that was, you know, you, people don't agree on this. So and most of the time, every once in a while, you'd get a bad comment or something. But mostly, I people were happy to see you at a door. They were happy to see you at an event. And they often, um, you know, it was like, let me go get my college age kids to sign or my spouse to yeah. sign was, was a pretty common reaction. Because a mom or a dad would be interested in helping Right, daughter, or, or yes. I know my or friends are interested, can rights. you come back right. at 5 o'clock and I'll have yeah. 10 friends and it, here. And it wasn't so. even moms, you know, looking to protect their daughters. It was also people with sons who were like, you know, they don't, you know, they didn't want to be in a, in a situation more than unwanted pregnancy. Um, so I think it was just earlier in the week when the 770-some thousand uh, signatures were delivered to yes. Columbus, mm -hmm. they have to be verified. Yes. Uh, so, do you have any idea now how long that's going to take? Has anybody made an estimate about when there will be an announcement? Um, all I, I, I've heard is rumors. Yeah. The worst, I, the worst <laughs> was like September. Then I got, yeah. oh, that's I a very long I believe that. Away. Well, I'm not, and I'm not certain, but I think some of them have been delivered to the county board of elections. Yeah, so they, each county takes their, the ones that are, and, and their employees get to go through and match yeah. signatures, and they're the ones who verify whether they're yeah. legit or not. Yeah, if they've got the right address and if they right. are a Is registered the, yeah. voter and so forth. Yeah. Exactly. So then, moving up this timeline, uh, a wrench was thrown into the gears by the Ohio legislature uh, when they voted to put issue one on the August ballot. Correct. So the right to vote on reproductive rights would be in November, but they have put something on the ballot for next month. So can you tell viewers what issue one is, the intent of it, what... Uh, how you want people to vote on it, uh, uh, kind of a little bit of pro and con about sure. issue one. So first of all, vote no. <laughs> the, the no vote preserves our Constitution 
uh, to what it is and how it has worked for the last 111 years. So a, a no vote is um, the vote for a no change. Uh, so issue one does two things. Number one, it raises the bar so significantly high that citizens will never be able to get another constitutional amendment on the ballot. So it, it basically bars citizen-led initiatives to change the Constitution. So really, they're not protecting the Constitution, they're stripping away Ohioans' voice and voters' voice. So we can't, um, we can't do that. Right now, you need 44 counties to sign on. It would be 88. It would double the number of signatures. One county could stop an amendment from happening. So it's a really high bar. The second thing it does is it changes um, the percentage of passage from 50% to 60%. And in a state that's about 50-50, not too many things are decided by those kinds of margins. So it raises that threshold. And what it essentially does, our state legislature is very gerrymandered. Um, you know, in a, in a state that's approximately 50-50 or 45-55, you know, we have, um, I believe, out of 99 representatives, um, something like 32 of them are Democrats. So it's really skewed um, and it's really unfair and there are not too many competitive districts. This would give that majority, that gerrymandered majority, total control over our Constitution. And so we no would, more checks and balances. No more checks and balances. It would strip away the citizens' rights. They, at the state legislature, pass things by majority. So 50% plus one, and you win. And um, they're stripping that away from citizens. So, so if people wanted to change this gerrymandering, uh, they would put a constitutional amendment on the ballot, and that's what Republicans also do not want. They also do not want that. And I wouldn't say it's just Republicans because, frankly, most people, and again, it's a pretty high number, it's around 70, 80 percent, are really against gerrymandering. I mean, and gerrymandering rewards the extremes of each party, and most people are probably in the middle. And if we had competitive districts, that rewards the middle, and it rewards, it forces people to be moderate. And so if we can get rid of the gerrymandering, we would bring Ohio back to the middle and more um, people would have to get along and they would have to get along politically. So if you take that away, basically you've got the minority and the extremes or the, the a Republican majority, but the extremes of it, you're not going to get the moderates, you're going to get the extreme views. So that's another consequence of issue one. That is an absolute consequence. And, uh, but the, the real motive behind issue one was to prevent or make it harder for the uh, for, uh, right. to pass the, 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 the health care yeah. yes. yeah. abortion and, and Frank LaRose flat out November. admitted that yeah flat yeah. out admitted that's why this came from and you know they had declared these illegal these elections in August are not things that voters expect so um, you know they're not ready to go vote they're ready to go on vacation uh, it's going to cost taxpayers about 20 million or 25 million dollars for this election, plus all the volunteers who are, you know, the poll workers who give up a day, and um, it's a lot of energy just from, you know, like us now having to talk about it. Um, and I'm also, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. <laughs> and also, you know, this election was frankly driven by special interest money from out of state. This money for this election came from a Chicago billionaire who is driving the yes vote on issue one. So he's a right to lifer. So right. he, he cares about one issue and one issue only. Yeah. But the, the August election is about all issues. There's, there's, no, there's no passion that you can have. Like if I am passionate about issue, I'm gonna run out and I'm gonna organize and I'm gonna get people to sign. You can do that now, but going forward, right. if, if, yeah. if this passes, the people have yeah. No and, and honestly, it will drive special interest money back into it because they're going to be the only people who, who, can, have af money. who can afford to do who it. Yeah. So if you want to keep to special that high interest. level of 60% of the voters doing it. Plus 88%. 88 mm -hmm. Yeah. So it will, it will drive special interest money into the state, not keep it out. Um, so to wrap this up, what would you, either of you, both of you, like to say further about either of the issues, the health component of what's going to happen in November and then issue one. 
that's coming up in just a few weeks? I just want people to know that if they vote yes on this, they're basically shooting themselves in the foot. Because, yes on issue one. Yes, they vote on, on issue one because the only way a citizen can get something on the ballot is through our amendment. And if, if they vote yes, whatever their, their uh, hot topic it is, we'll never, we'll never see the ballot again. And so the only thing that we'll see laws is, is from our state house and our Senate, and there's no check and balances on their, yeah. on their panel. So I, I guess I would um, first vote no vote no to preserve the Constitution the way it has been. Um, and I agree with Jane, you are shooting yourself in the foot. The other thing I would add is there is an incredible amount of misinformation, disinformation. This is not about guns. This is not about um, what parental rights. Parental it's not rights. about education. <laughs> it's it's a it's, it's not really, about trans kids. <laughs> yeah, there is so much. And it, and at first I thought, well, this is you know people are skewing the the issue, but they're not. They're just flat out not telling you the truth. And I think we need to stand up against that and say that's not what this is. And people should you know check the facts, read the read the ballot initiative, read the law, read what this does, and check and be factually be prepared. But Vote no. Um, women should not have laws on their bodies. These decisions should be made privately with the people involved and their physicians. And um, Ohioans should not give up majority rule. Well, let's uh, let's revisit this subject say mid August <laughs> after after this yes. issue one is voted up or down, and then revisit the no what's going to happen in November with the uh, women's reproductive rights. We'd like that very much. Yeah. We'd like that very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you for, for coming. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, David. I think thank you guys you. did a great job. Thank you for getting us. I was uh, really nervous about doing on. this because I'm probably the last person that's on earth that's qualified to really talk about all this. <laughs> uh, but I, from what I can tell, you did a good job explaining it in, okay. in a fair way. So thank Super. you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Well, thank you.